In early July of 2021, a young woman and her fiancé decided to downsize their lives and take themselves on a cross-country road trip. They had a 2012 Ford Transit Connect van, and they fixed it up to suit their upcoming lifestyle. During their road trip, she would document all of the different places her and her fiancé would go, and she would do this on Instagram. On August 19th, a video was posted to YouTube documenting their trip so far. On August 27th, the young woman's mother would get a text from her daughter's phone that she thought was strange. The message said, Can you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls. She last spoke with her daughter on August 25th, 2021. The reason that the text was strange was because Stan was her daughter's grandfather and she didn't refer to him by his first name. She headed to the police to let them know about her concern. It wasn't until September 11th of 2021 that this young woman, Gabby Petito, would be officially reported missing. Welcome to the Beach House 34 True Crime Podcast. I'm your host, Christine Worth. Gabby's last Instagram post was on August 25th of 2021. However, some speculate that the posts may have been edited, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. But first, let's take a look at Gabby's story up until she disappeared. Gabby and her fiancé began dating in 2019, and eventually... Gabby moved into his home where he lived with his parents in North Port, Florida. They both worked at a Publix grocery store where she was a pharmacy technician and he was in the grocery department. Before the onset of the COVID epidemic, they both quit their jobs. In June of 2020, Gabby and Brian became engaged. Gabby then purchased the 2012 Ford van in late 2020, and they both transformed it into a camper, which they would then use to go on their road trip. In mid-June, Gabby and Brian went to Gabby's brother's graduation in Blue Point, New York. They left from here on July 2nd in their van for their road trip. On their first stop, which was on July 5th, their first stop on July 5th of 2021 was at Monument Rocks in Kansas. They then traveled to several national and state parks over the course of the month. All the while, Gabby is posting photos on her Instagram account, which you can still visit at Gabs, G-A-B-S, Petito, P-E-T-I-T-O. Her first post of this particular road trip was on July 5th. It shows Gabby at Monument Rocks. On July 16th, she posted another photo at Zion National Park. On the 21st, she is photographed at Bryce Canyon National Park. And then on the 28th, at Canyonlands National Park, Arch Mesa. Now, all of these dates and photos from Gabby's account were posted on CBS News. On August 12th, a phone call came in to the Moab, Utah Police Dispatch, and it said that a couple, which turned out to be Gabby and Brian, had been fighting. And this witness stated that he saw the man slap the woman. They then ran up and down the sidewalk And then the man hit her again before getting back into their white van. There was another witness who said that it looked like the two, Gabby and Brian, were talking aggressively and that Gabby was punching 
him in the arm. This witness also said that it appeared as though Brian was trying to take off in the van and leave Gabby behind. She somehow got into the driver's seat and moved over to the passenger side and then was heard saying, why do you have to be so mean? This phone call was received by the police in the morning. At around four o'clock that same afternoon, the police had noticed a white van matching the description of the earlier morning incident driving erratically close to the entrances of Arches National Park in Utah, where they pulled it over. The entire raw body cam footage is available to view online, and it's nearly an hour and a half long. So instead of trying to relay everything that happened in the video, What I've done is I've pulled some portions of it and then added some commentary. I've tried my best to remove any distracting background noise from the traffic passing by because it is quite loud. So what we'll do is we'll start with the first officer on the scene who was just beginning to pull the van over. Driver is showing some obscure driving, possibly intoxicated. Currently doing 45 miles an hour. Zone three here is 25. Oh! Subject says to hit the curb. Correction speed limit is 15. I'm about three quarters of a mile into the Arcus just before the gate. As the officer walks up to the vehicle, you see Gabby unlock the door on her side and roll down her window. She is obviously very upset. She's crying and it's hard for her to get out a full sentence. The officer then asks them to put the car in park and shut off the car and to put the keys on the dashboard. He then asks Gabby to get out of the car and walks with her to his vehicle, where he then interviews her. You want to place your vehicle in the park and go ahead and turn it off for me? No, park? Oh, it it isn't park yet. Okay, turn off your engine. Go ahead and set your keys on the dashboard, all right? What's you guys' names? I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm just crying. I'm fighting this morning. I'm doing some other things. It was a long day. We were camping yesterday and camping about, about supplies and stuff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hit the, the, the bump there. I was distracting him from driving. I'm sorry. Can I get you to step out of the vehicle for me now? Yeah. Just hang tight right there. Um, do you mind if I take your keys and just put them on your hood? Yeah, I'm so Thank sorry. Thank you. Oh, no, you're fine. I'm going to go ahead and close your door. Hold on. What do you want to do? SO229, I have the female that was on the passenger mm-hmm. seat separated from the male. The keys are on the hood. You want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's just some days. <laughs> I have really bad OCD, and okay. I just—I was just cleaning and cleaning up back of the end before, and I was apologizing to him and saying, "I'm sorry that I'm so mean because sometimes I have OCD and sometimes I just get really frustrated. Not like mean towards him. I just like, I guess my vibe is like I." <laughs> like in a bad mood. And I was just saying, I'm sorry if I'm in a bad mood. I was really stressed. I had so much work I was doing on my computer this morning. What do you do for a living? Um, well, I, I think it's for getting an organic juice bar, but I just hit my job. Okay. I was a nutritionist. That's oh, what, okay. That's my that's job. Cool. I just um, hit my job to travel across the country and I'm trying to start a blog and okay. have a lot of stuff. So I've been building my website so I've been really stressed and he doesn't really believe that I could do any of it so that's kind of been like a I don't know he's like been down there I don't know we've been fighting all morning and 
And he wouldn't let me in the car before. And then Why wouldn't he let you in the car? Because you have your OCD? He told me I needed to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm perfectly calm. I'm calm all the time. And he really stresses me out. And I just... Why don't I sit you down in the back seat of my car? You're not in any trouble. Okay? <laughs> I'm not going to be putting handcuffs on you. You obviously don't have any weapons. I'm going to get you into the air conditioning. Let you take a breath. Relax a little bit. And then I'll come back and talk to you in a few minutes, okay? Okay. All right. Like I said, you're not in any trouble. So just go ahead and take a seat. Watch me. Next, the officer then interviews Brian. What's that? Yeah, I just spoke to her. So, you want to do me a favor? Let's go ahead and get you to step out of the vehicle. All righty. Come on over here. You're not in any trouble right now. So, tell me what's going on. It, the shoes get worked up sometimes, and I try and really distance myself from her. So, like, I, I lock the car and I walk away from her. You know, what happened this morning is that. She's trying to start up like her own little website blog and everything, so I give her time. And I, we really had a nice morning with everything, and if anything, but um, she just got worked up because we're trying to get going and get our day going because we want to go um, like hard to somebody. Okay. Like, like, you you want to tell me about those scratches on your face? She had a cell phone in her hand. That's why I was pushing her away because I she, she wanted. To be, I locked the keys so I could walk away. I, I said, let's just take a breather and let's not. You know, go anywhere, let's just calm down for a minute because she's going to work up. And then she had her phone and was trying to get the keys from her, so I got in the way. I was just trying to, I know I shouldn't push, but I was just trying to push her away to go, let's, let's just take a minute, step back and breathe. And we see if she got me with her phone. Can I see your hand? Oh, you got a mark right here. Oh, that's from a wire. That's from a wire? Yeah. You want to tell me about hitting that curb? Hitting the curb was her grabbing the wheel. She grabbed the wheel? Yeah. She said, I can't believe we're getting pulled over, and then she grabbed the wheel. What about the speed? Did she take over the road? No, I thought I was going into the, the park again to get water because we have a six gallon water container to fill uh -huh. up. So we just gave her water for the hike. Okay. And we were just, I was trying to keep everything calm and quiet because there's plans still to go for a hike. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Of course, of course. Do me a favor. You want to go ahead and just take a seat right over here on the curb sure. for me? And about a speed, and I'm sorry. You don't you have anything seat. in that pocket or anything like that, do you? Nope. Just the wallet? All right. And then, do you mind lifting your shirt so I can check the waistband? I got turn around for me real quick. Okay. I just, I just no, want I to make you. sure. That's all, man. Go ahead. Do me a favor. Take a seat. All right. Okay. Oh, do you have your ID on you? In the car. If you want to come with me, yeah, I'll no, we'll just do this. Just go ahead and take a seat. If you come with me, I'll give it to you. All right, you're fine. Uh, what's the first name? Brian. Brian. Is that right? Spelling. B R I N. Yeah, and. L A U N. And then your last name? L A U N. L A U N. D R I E. D R I E? Yep. Laundry? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your date of birth, Brian? A few more officers arrive, and one of them begins talking with Gabby, trying to figure out what happened. Now, the following audio that you're about to hear goes silent. Uh, while talking, while they were talking with Gabby, and this happens actually within the video itself, as if within the video it was purposefully muted. So you don't hear the rest of the conversation with her, but here it is. Bravo, Romeo, India, Alpha, November. And then what? His reaction was to what? He's gonna be out of Florida. Was he grabbed him? Did he did he hit you though? I mean, I mean it's okay if you're saying you hit him, but you know, I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth if he actually hit you. Because you know where did he hit you? No, don't worry, just be honest. Did he slap your face or what? Go ahead. Okay. So, 
Oh, has he been drinking? No. What was up with his driving? I saw if he said he hit a curb. Uh, I, I... While you're driving? Uh, While he was driving, you were hitting him? Uh, Did you already tell him all this? I didn't get that far into okay, it. She so was she was hyperventilating. She's a little saying bit. that they don't, they don't drink, but at the point when you lit them up, we don't drink or anything. I, she I, started I was hitting. Just, yeah, I was yelling at him, and then when and he turned your lights on, I like kind of punched his arm like through the. Through the so she's saying like he hit the curb. You yeah. said it was, it was Gabby. Yeah. I'm sorry, I really thought it was Gabby. Yeah. The police then again interview Brian and ask him why he's being so hyper or if he's taking any medications. So, if you don't mind, start at the beginning for me. Start at the beginning. Um, well, I don't want to go too far back, but we've been in uh, beyond land for the past like, week or so. Okay. Around. And the flies here are like, pretty intense, so the flies are definitely going to get into her. And then my feet are dirty and everything, so I think that our little squabble started because you're, you're hanging out of the coffee shop. And when I got back to the van, there was some dirty stuff in the van. And uh, I moved our food around. It was a little disorganized, so she gets a little... Do you take those? Sorry about that. It's okay. Do you I, need any water? That's okay. It's hot out here. I was telling we were going to get water because we ran out, but it's I okay. Yeah. No, it's all right. I don't know like classic problems. It's okay. Thank you, though. Okay. Um, but we just had a little disagreement there. And the disagreement was just that she was getting a little worked up, and I was saying, no, it's okay. Thank you so much. It's not my fault. So it was just more disagreement, and I just wanted to. Stay what was the disagreement this. about? It was. It was. I wouldn't even call it disagreement. It was just that I, I'm dirty, and I can't change being dirty. Like I got dirty feet. I got sand in my footpops and stuff like that. Um, it was that we were at uh, the coffee shop for so long because we were there from nine to three. So I guess there's a few little little things, little just little. Relationships. I don't know if you have a relationship in three. I've been married for over five years now. So. There's a lot of little things. Right? Yeah, I can tell. Um, and we, I get it. We, yeah. we really, it was, we weren't physical before the point where I said, "All right, let's let's just take a breather and, and like walk away for a minute. I'll lock the van up and I'll go for a walk this way, and you can go walk that way on the block. You know, there's okay. moon. I was called moon flower. Right. Yeah. But, you know, nice areas. You can go either way. It's all shaded. So let's just go for a little walk and breather. Come back. Just breathe. Yeah, we're happy. You know, um, so they, but she was, I saw, I'm not upset with her, but she got a little worked up and she had a phone in her hand and a keys and everything. And she wanted, I know the keys, like her rings, she had her rings, her phone. And I, well, I was holding on to the keys because I just, I didn't want to go anywhere. And my big fear is, I, mean, I don't have my phone, I don't really, I don't have a phone. So she goes off without me, you know, <laughs> all right, I'm on my own. <laughs> so, uh. I was saying, let's just go for a walk, and she was trying to get the keys for me, so I was just going, just wait back up, back up, and that's when she hit me, and I, I didn't, didn't get, I don't want to push you, but I didn't get very, I didn't get overtly physical, I was just trying to keep her away and, and not get hit, and then I got really loud, and like, that's probably your everyone's attention, where I was going, you know, back up, get away, just give me a, you know, okay, so, so I, you said you pushed her to create some distance, obviously, yeah. right, what happened after that, what got, what got the scratches on your eye? The phone. The phone, so you push her, and she hit you she was i wasn't I, I, it wasn't like a push and she jumped on me she was she was already she was already i don't know what she was already swinging and i was pushing yeah. a lot of angles a lot of nails a lot of rings yeah you got yeah, three scratches in your neck you got one on your left side of your head you got one in your face here and you got four for the bleeding do you mind lifting up your right sleeve for me i'm curious about something Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a little What's bit of nails. I suppose fingernails, but yeah. I'm not complaining. Not <laughs> I'm not complaining about fingernails. Is it nails. bruised or tender or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Okay. I'm fine, and I love that. I, I hope she doesn't have too many complaints about me. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, I, I feel bad. I, I can get so public. I was just trying to be loud. She was, she was, you know, I just try to make her calm down and be like, look, everyone's watching. So I'm like, stop this. <laughs> Thank you, Tyson. Kind of like hyper. Do I see my my, my heart rate? Up, whenever the lights flash on, it, it gets your heart rate up. If I see my trust me, it does me too, and I'm the one. <laughs> it yeah. gets me going. A little you probably can say, "Hey, buddy," whenever somebody walks up. So okay. Um, so you 
Yeah, she takes any. She's she, she's crazy. <laughs> no, um, no, I don't think so. No, none that I know. Of. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna The officers at this point then, amongst themselves, discuss who should be charged and decide that Gabby is the primary aggressor. trying to lock her out of the vehicle. She even told us that he was trying to lock her out, told her to go take a walk. So that she was trying to get in. She eventually couldn't get in and actually pawed her way in through the driver's door. He said, I don't understand why she's doing that. Well, I think it's because it's the only door that wasn't locked that she could get through. She's trying to get in over him. He's trying to disengage from her. I guess he hung her backpack on the back probably so she'd have her shit because he didn't have to engage with her. Everything she's saying is same thing, I haven't heard what he said, but that's what he said. It's also what the witness is saying. The witness says, I never saw him hit her. I saw him shove her, but I couldn't tell you if it was an aggression against her or a defense against her as far as her, you know, being the aggressor. So at this point, from what, unless the guy's screaming that he needs to go to jail and did something to this girl, it sounds to me like she is the primary aggressor. Now, based on what the police have learned... They then decide to ask Gabby what her intent was with Brian. Gabby, this is a very, very important question. How you answer this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. Think very hard before you answer the question. Do not quickly answer it. Think very hard. When you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do? What were you what were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was what was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop slapping. What doesn't sound to me like she attempted to get you? It's your call. It's 100% your call. I support you either way. I'll let you get back to your parents. In the end, they decide that no one will be charged with any kind of domestic uh, charge. Their first thought was to take Gabby in for assault, but in the end, they decide to instead separate the two of them for the night. Now, during this entire ordeal... Brian is considered the victim. So Brian will be getting a free hotel room while Gabby is given the keys to the van and told where she can go to pay $5 to grab a shower. The entire video of this encounter with the police was posted by Inside Edition and you can watch it all for yourself on their YouTube channel if you'd like to. The video is disturbing, and I don't believe that this is simply because I know what happened afterwards. Uh, Gabby is apologizing over and over for her actions, always saying it was her fault. Her demeanor alone makes me feel as if she has been incessantly, psychologically as well as physically abused. She also appears in distress and almost terrified. Now, during the entire video, I could not find one instance where the officers actually ask Gabby if she felt safe. Now, remember, up until this incident, Gabby has been posting on her Instagram account and her last post was on August 25th. But remember when I talked about some of the dates being a little bit off? Before we go any further... I want to go back to Gabby's Instagram account and her photos because earlier I had said that CBS News had reposted the photos and the dates of her locations. But 
after this was reported, it seems that a few of them had been changed. In other words, the dates don't exactly add up. For instance, the post made originally on July 5th was edited on August 2nd. The post on July 21st was edited on July 31st. Now, you might think I'm splitting hairs here, and it may very well all be and be very innocent. You know, maybe she's just updating her posts. But some have speculated that some of the edited posts, they aren't written like Gabby would write them, or they aren't tagged as she would tag them. Further speculation has been that Brian instead took her phone and edited her posts. Why? I'm not sure. The last post on her Instagram account was August 25th, and the strange text her mom received about Can You Help Stan was on August 27th. So, was this Brian posing as Gabby when Gabby's mom received that text? You know, furthermore, if it was him, he obviously had access to her phone, which of course would mean access to her Instagram account, giving him the ability to change some posts. Although the posts that were changed just don't really seem to amount to a whole lot. Now, even though Gabby's parents, they had brought this information to the police and they let the police know that hey, we haven't heard from our daughter in days. Um, Here is this weird text that we just received. Even though all of this was brought to the police, it wasn't until actually September 11th that Gabby was officially reported missing. The last time she had spoken with her family, as I said, was on August 25th. And at this point, she was traveling near Grand Teton, National Park in Jackson, Wyoming. But her parents would soon find out something very, very disturbing. The Northport Police Department in Northport, Florida. Remember, this is where Gabby and Brian were living at the time. The police department there held a press conference. And in this conference, the police stated that Brian had arrived home alone 10 days before Gabby was reported missing. In other words, on the 1st of September. You know, didn't Brian's parents wonder where Gabby was? I mean, she had been living with them. She was engaged to marry their son. Why would Brian just show up without her? What story did Brian tell them? And why wouldn't they contact the police or even Gabby's parents? So by this time, the police are keeping surveillance on Brian. They even reported that they knew exactly where he was. But the following day, Brian's family reported him missing. And the police were completely confused. They had followed Brian and they knew where he was or Did they? The police did see Brian head to Miyakahatchee State Park, which is about eight miles away from Northport. And this was on the 13th of September. But then the police thought that he had come back home on the 15th. And they thought this because they saw his Mustang return to the house. However, The police later said that it wasn't Brian who had been driving the Mustang, but it was his mom. So, his mom then had to know where he was, right? Somehow, she knew that he had left his car at the park somewhere because she arrived back home with it. Was the intention to just have Brian go on the run? How did she get to the park? Did someone else drive her there to get the car? Maybe she drove Brian and took him to the park. So now that Brian's name is out there in the public realm in relation to the search for Gabby, 
it was around this time that a woman posted that she and her boyfriend had an encounter with Brian in late August of 2021 in Wyoming. This woman posted her information on TikTok after hearing that Gabby was missing. She was incredibly detailed with the information that she gave, which she eventually did turn over to the police. She said that she and her boyfriend picked up Brian, who was hitchhiking at Coulter Bay in Grand Teton National Park. Here is what she had to say. And on August 29th, my boyfriend and I picked up Brian at Grand Teton National Park at 5.30 at night at Coulter Bay. Um, I'm hoping this can help someone identify him because I saw him from TikTok, which then made me call the authorities and um, my boyfriend and I have been in contact with a bunch of different people to help um, piece together different parts of this case. But we picked him up at Coulter Bay, like I said, at 530. He approached us asking us for a ride because he needed to go to Jackson, which we were going to Jackson that night. So I said, you know, hop in. Um, He hops in the back of my Jeep. We then, you know, proceeded to make small talk, um, but before he came in the car, he offered to pay us like $200 to give him a ride, like 10 miles. So that was kind of weird. Um, he then told us he's been camping for multiple days without his fiance. He did say he had a fiance and that she was working on their social media page back at their van. Um, then once like in conversation I brought up yep like we're going to Jackson um he freaked out he's like nope I need to get out right now um you know like pull over so we pulled over at the Jackson Dam which I don't know if you're um if you know like Teton Park but it's not very far from Coulter Bay and if this does like reach people I can post pictures of you know exactly where we were we picked him off and the whole route or whatever and like screenshots of like the timestamps. We dropped him off at 6.09 p.m. on August 29th. Um, He kind of, like, hurried out of the car. And then he's like, okay, I'm just going to go find someone else to, you know, hitchhike. And we're like, okay. Um, It it was a weird situation. So when we picked him up, he was wearing a backpack. He had a long sleeve, pants, hiking boots. And he had, like, scruff. Um... But he didn't look dirty. For someone who was camping for multiple days, like, he didn't look dirty. He didn't smell dirty. So that part was kind of weird. Um, and I'm just really hoping that they find her. And this this helps someone, like, remember seeing him or, you know, something like that. Since Gabby's last known location was near Wyoming, this means that Brian's trip from Wyoming to his home in Northport, Florida would have taken him anywhere between 35 to 37 hours to drive. Now, it's unlikely that he drove straight through, but, you know, maybe he did. Just the road trip alone means that he was on the road for over a day, which means he probably left Wyoming around the 29th or the 30th of August. The police did go to Brian's home and talked with him, or tried to talk with him, But his parents wouldn't make him available to speak with them unless they had, quote, really good evidence that he did something. And then his family advised them to contact their lawyer. A couple of days later, Brian Laundrie was officially named a person of interest. Gabby's father, Joseph, had said, quote, the only reason you invoke your fifth in my opinion, is because you don't want to incriminate yourself. I'm not trying to accuse nobody, but right now, it looks like you're guilty. On Thursday, the 16th of September, Gabby's parents begged for help as they read aloud a letter to Brian Laundrie's parents. Now, this letter was read by Gabby's parents' lawyer, Richard Stafford. And here is what he said. Good afternoon. I'm Rick Stafford and I represent the Schmidt and the the Petito family. I have a letter that they want to send to Christopher and Rivetta Laundry, and I'm going to read it at this time and then I'll take limited questions. 
Christopher and Rebecca Laundry. We are writing this letter to ask you to help find our daughter. We understand you are going through a difficult time and your instinct is strong to protect your son. We ask you to put yourselves in our shoes. We haven't been able to sleep or eat and our lives are falling apart. We believe you know the location of where Brian left Gabby. We beg you to tell us. As a parent, how could you let us go through this pain and not help us? As a parent, how could you put Gabby's younger brothers and sisters through this? Gabby lived with you for over a year. She's going to be your daughter-in-law. How can you keep her location hidden? You were both at Jim and Nicole's house. You were both so happy that Brian and Gabby got engaged and were planning to spend their lives together. Please, if you or your family have any decency left, please tell us where Gabby is located. Tell us if we are even looking in the right place. All we want is for Gabby to come home. Please help us make that happen. And that was from Jim Schmidt, Nicole Schmidt, Joe Petito, and Tara Petito. By September 17th, Brian too was officially missing. The police said, quote, we've been trying all week to talk to his family, to talk to Brian, and now they've called us here on Friday, we've gone to the home, And they're saying now that they have not seen their son. So we are working through these details as we speak. It is another twist in this story. On September 20th, the FBI then raided the laundry's home and declared it a crime scene. His parents said that Brian had gone hiking and he had not returned. On the 21st, Gabby's body was located near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. Now, later on in October, the medical examiner would say that she had died of strangulation, but they would not say or could not say if it was a manual strangulation or if something was used. But regardless of the method, the fact is, is that strangulation is a very, very personal crime. Now, even though Brian was now missing and yet to be found, a federal arrest warrant was issued for him. He was indicted for, quote, use of unauthorized access devices following Gabby's death. The documents allege that Brian used an unauthorized debit card with the intent to defraud. Now, in the meantime, Brian's parents are still concerned about him and hope the police can find him. Their attorney, Steve Bertolino, gave a statement saying, quote, the speculation by the public and some in the press that the parents assisted Brian in leaving the family home or in avoiding arrest on a warrant that was issued after Brian had already been missing for several days is just wrong. Gabby's funeral, in the meantime was held on September 26th. Cassie Laundry, and this is Brian's sister, she gave an interview to Good Morning America. Now, this interview occurred after Gabby's body had been found and after Brian was reported missing. She said that she and her family had gone on a camping trip with Brian after he had returned home on September 1st. They had all gone camping together as a family five days before Gabby was reported missing. According to his sister, they just went for a few hours, had dinner and s'mores around a campfire, and then left. She didn't pick up that Brian was acting strange or out of character. Thirteen days later, they would find Gabby. But Cassie had no idea where Brian was at that moment. For 32 days, authorities tried to find Brian 
with no luck. Then, on October 20th, a body was found in Mia Kahachi Creek Environmental Park, and a day later, the remains were confirmed to be that of Brian Laundry. Next to Brian was found a backpack and a notebook. Authorities had searched this area before, but at that time, it was underwater, and they didn't discover him at that time. Now, Brian's family, after learning of the news, spoke through their attorney, who said that, quote, Brian was upset when he left the laundry home on September 13th, although his parents tried to persuade him to stay, he wouldn't. He further said that Brian's remains will be cremated and there will be no funeral service. Now, when asked a question about how Brian had died, he said that, quote, no manner or cause of death was determined and the remains were sent to an anthropologist for further evaluation. Also, that the FBI had everything they needed from the family of Brian with respect to the investigation into Gabby's death. However, it was determined that Brian had died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. How this wasn't immediately noticeable by the medical examiner is beyond me, but I don't know how long he'd been dead, uh, how long he'd been in the water, how many animals maybe had gotten to his body by this point in time. So, you know, it's possible. But remember that notebook that they found near Brian? In early 2022, the FBI said that within this notebook were statements by Brian that said that he took responsibility for Gabby's death. And the police then consider this case closed. Now, later on, the contents of the notebook would be released. And in it, Brian wrote, I ended her life. I thought it was merciful that it is what she wanted, but I see now all the mistakes I made. I panicked. I was in shock. But from the moment I decided, took away her pain, I knew I couldn't go on without her. He also claims that Gabby had gotten hurt while crossing a stream too fast because it was dark. Brian said that Gabby, quote, had a small bump on her forehead that eventually got larger and that she was, quote, begging for an end to her pain. So even after death, Brian is still trying to distance himself from what he did, claiming he killed her because her pain was too much. What was also allegedly found in the entire contents with Brian was a letter to Brian from his mom. The outside of the envelope said, burn after reading. And it's said to contain information that leads you to believe that his mom was offering to get shovels and help bury a body. Now, this letter is in the possession of the laundry's attorney currently. It's unlikely to be released by their attorney, but it could be made available either through the FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, or during the course of the civil lawsuit against Brian's parents that Gabby's parents began. Which brings me to the fact that, yes, Gabby's parents in March of 2022 filed a lawsuit against the Laundries for $30,000 in damages for the mental anguish they were put through because they felt that Brian's parents knew more than they had stated. Their court filing states that instead of helping with the search for Gabby, they went on vacation. Brian's mom blocked Gabby's mom's phone number and her Facebook profile as early as September of 2021. Now remember, Gabby was officially reported missing on the 11th and Brian had been home since the 1st without Gabby. Gabby's family believes that the laundries knew where Gabby was even while the authorities were trying to locate her. The laundries tried to have this lawsuit dismissed and their reasoning for this 
they were not obligated to disclose any information they knew about their son or Gabby. Now, when a judge received the case on this dismissal, the judge then rendered their verdict and said that while they agreed that the laundries were not under any obligation to talk about the case, the fact that they made a public statement where they said that they hoped Gabby was found alive, even when they allegedly knew she was not, was particularly callous and cruel. Now, the case involving Gabby's parents and Brian's parents is scheduled for trial in August of 2023. And that'll do it for this episode of the Beach House 34 True Crime Podcast. Uh, Before I sign off here, I do want to make a very important statement. Um, If you or someone you know is in a domestic violence situation, please know that help is out there at the National Domestic Violence Hotline. You can text the word START, S-T-A-R-T, Two eight eight seven eight eight. Again, that's the word start to eight eight seven eight eight. You can also call them at one eight hundred seven nine nine safe S A F E, and that's also seven two three three. Again, you can call them at one eight hundred seven nine nine seven two three three, or Simply visit their website at thehotline.org, all one word, T-H-E-H-O-T-L-I-N-E, The Hotline, where you can chat live with someone who can help right away. Thank you so much for listening. You know I appreciate all of you. I I am so happy to be back at this after a, a tumultuous couple of weeks, I guess you could probably say, so Uh, I look forward to providing you with more paranormal and true crime stories in the very, very near future. Thank you so much.